welcome. So that worked out much better than I planned. Um, so this is our very first TEDx Cranbrook Schools Women, and hopefully one of many. I found out from the TEDx organization um, that this is the most global TEDx event ever. We have 220 TEDx locations in 58 countries today and tomorrow coming together to talk about women and girls, coming get together to focus on the achievement of women and girls. For me, that creates goosebumps. Back in long time ago, when Booth's first put forth a mission to create an institution to support the education of women that rivaled the, that of men, that was, that was unheard of. And today, we get to sit in the company of fellow peers, colleagues, family, and friends who are here to talk about the experience of women and girls. We also get to share in a connected relationship with those all over the world who are also coming together to talk about these issues, to embrace and to celebrate the achievement of women and girls. For me, that's exciting. And at the girls' middle school, we knew that this was something we needed to bring to our campus, something we had to have our families embrace and enjoy, and hopefully something that we can continue to offer in years to come focusing on all the achievements of our current students, of our alums, parents, friends, and many others in our community to celebrate those achievements together and to inspire our current students, our young ones, to do these things, to reach out, to seek, to inspire others themselves. We have a wonderful, wonderful program in store for you. I am excited already. Um, our first speaker is Stacy Rivard, who is our head of school at our girls' middle school. She has driven this division in a way that inspires all of us to seek new ways to educate, new ways to think about, new ways to re-envision young girls, how we see them, how we teach them, how we inspire them. Without further ado, Stacey Rivard. When I was 10, my parents divorced. And among other things that meant when something got broken at my house, my dad wasn't there to fix it. So as a kid, it's something that I thought I could do, something that I could help. I mean, how hard could it be, right? The other thing I need to tell you is I was a latchkey kid. I don't know if you know what that means, but after school, I went home and I was unsupervised for two hours. It was a perfect time to repair. So as a young, curious kid, I began to find things to repair around the house. It got to the point where I was more interested not in repairing, but figuring out how things worked. So I took essentially every electrical appliance apart in my house. The refrigerator was off limits. I knew my mother would kill me if I took that apart. And I actually did start to take apart the television, but we had one of those big old fashioned consoles you know the ones I'm talking about. And when I saw those tubes, I sort of stopped. I found that there was an opportunity to repair something pretty big. My mom was complaining a lot that the vacuum sweeper was always getting clogged. So during one of my repair sessions, I knew I could fix that design flaw. So I took the vacuum sweeper apart. I made the fix put it back together. I had a couple of extra parts. I don't know how that happened. I plugged it in, turned it on, and it roared to life. Now, my mom never knew for quite some time that what I had been up to. She was replacing the belt, and she found a piece of window screen that I had neatly tucked up underneath the beater bars near the air intake. We had a talk. Invention. I was an inventor. 
It truly is a product of the imagination, especially a device, a contrivance, or a process originated through study and experimentation. But I just wasn't an inventor. I thought I was an explorer. And some of my favorite pastimes were digging in the garden. In my mother's uh, house, I knew I was going to find the fossilized remains of the missing link, that I was the next archaeologist. I also was in the basement growing pea plants. Yes, I mean pea plants, because I thought I could po cross-pollinate them to see what the genetic potential would be in the next generation. I was kind of a strange little girl. My heroes were Dr. Louis Leakey, Jacques Cousteau, and Gregor Mendel. What 12-year-old has a bunch of old men as their heroes? But I didn't have any women that I could look up to that were doing the sorts of things that I was interested in. My mom was worried. I didn't want to be a cheerleader like my older sister. But I had a seventh grade science teacher who sort of put up with me and listened to the things that I had to say. And she seemed really interested. And one day she kept me after class and she looked me straight in the eye and she handed me a gray cloth covered journal and she said to me, you know, real inventors, real scientists, they write their ideas and inventions down. You should do that too. It was probably one of the very few times that an adult encouraged me. Actually, I was discouraged more often. And over time, I began to believe that girls don't invent, they don't discover, they don't explore. And I also believed that I began to lower expectations for myself and what I could achieve. OK, that was back then. This is now. It's 2013, almost 2014. And you know what? I'm sad in my heart to know that many of the biases that existed when I was a girl still exist. Maybe they're not communicated in the same ways they were to me but our girls are still being saturated with messages about what they can and what they can't do. I want to share this with you. This is from a major retailer. If I shared their name, you would know exactly who I'm talking about. This was from their online catalog about a year ago. And it's a t-shirt that was designed for girls. You can see size 7 to 16. And it says, my favorite subjects, boys, shopping, dance, and music. This is the other shirt. I don't know if in the back you can see it. But it says, I'm too pretty to do homework. My brother does it for me. What does this say to our girls? What message is this telling them? That they're somehow less than and less capable. Why is a society we continue to do this to our girls? And it also messages to our boys what society thinks women and girls are. We need to encourage our girls, or why do we encourage our girls to measure their worth based on their appearance and not their mind? Why do we expect and accept that girls should be mean to one another instead of collaborative and supportive? Think about the role models that your daughters have. Think about the media. Think about the TV shows that they watch. I know what they watch because they tell me. Dance Moms, Pretty Little Liars, all those Housewife series. It's really no wonder then that when girls enter adolescence that they begin to lower their expectations of what they can achieve. And this is backed up by research. One study that I'd like to share with you is so fascinating uh, hundreds of seven-year-olds were interviewed, both boys and girls. And the question to them was, do you want to be the president of the United States one day? And of those seven-year-olds, it was an equal split between boys and girls. But the same kids were questioned when they were 15. And something remarkable and frightening happened. For every girl that said yes, there were 10 boys that said yes. 
What happened to make that happen, for that shift to occur? We understand that nature does a fine job, that in our world we're pretty much 50-50 as far as men and women, boys and girls. The population is fairly equal. So then why is it that of the 195 independent countries that exist in the world, only 17 are led by women? In the United States, Nearly 18% of the congressional seats are held by women, and for women of color, it's dismal at 5%. Now, one could suggest that it's just because women are not prepared. They're not prepared educationally. But that statistic does not bear true, because more women are graduating with college degrees than men. So it seems to me that when it comes to making decisions that will affect our world, that women's voices are not being heard equally. Together, we must reinvent a new truth for both boys and girls, that everyone should be valued for their ideas, their thoughts, and opinions. We must re-envision what it is to be a woman in our society and what those roles are. You might ask me, why am I so passionate about doing everything that I can to support our girls, to help them stand up to the societal pressures, to look past those images, those stereotypes? Maybe it's because of that little girl that I once was. I certainly know it's because of my two daughters and your daughters and the girls that are in this room. But I really just want a just and equal society. What do we do? We must support the curiosity of our girls and, and their opportunities to explore and discover their world. We must encourage them to take risks and allow them to fail. Some of our brightest girls are the girls that are most reluctant to risk because they do not want to risk failure. That standard doesn't hold true for boys. We must instill confidence in our girls, empower them to let them know that their voices can be heard. We need to provide leadership opportunities for our girls, not just leadership opportunities, but then support and guidance when they're in those roles and encourage them to stay in those roles. We have to reject the status quo. We need to think about what messages the media is saying to us, and we can't support them. We need to break down those internal barriers that we have all internalized, men and women, about what men do and what women do. And we have to dismantle those external barriers that exist. At Cranbrook Kingswood Girls Middle School, we try to do this every single day. It is our passion to help our girls develop a mindset of growth and potential, to explore the opportunities that, to ex that exist for them, to stretch them educationally, athletically, and artistically. We bring to the forefront the accomplishments of women, as simple as bulletin boards that say science is women's work, to the intentional choices we make in our curriculum to ensure that strong female protagonists are in our literature. It's our job as parents, as educators, to ignite this passion in our children and this mindset of growth and potential. Won't you join me? Thank you.